I just want to do God's will. The kind of revolution that the world needs is a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You are the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today Live. Randy Robinson here. There is an ideology that has become popularized recently. Uh, It has become dogma uh, in the highest levels of government, of education, of entertainment, uh, and even some of the corporate world. Uh, It is unbiblical. It is unnatural. It is anti-science. And it is what is called transgenderism, the idea that a man can become a woman or a woman can become a man. And it is expressing itself in some truly horrific ways uh, that physically damage people, but also that emotionally, and I believe spiritually, uh, is really, really damaging to people. And I don't like people to be hurt. (laughs) So we're going to to talk about that today. There is a new book out. It is an e-book at this point. Uh, It might be printed up. I know you can do some print on demand with certain things, but uh, you can go get the e-book right now. It is called exposing the gender lie and it is written by a a friend a couple of friends of life today jeff myers and brandon showalter and we're going to hit this today we're going to help you discuss this in the the public forum uh, and really kind of unpack this thing so this is a very important program for what we're facing today i truly believe it is like i said one of the most damaging ideologies that uh I don't know, maybe the most damaging I've seen in my lifetime. So glad you're here. If you want to hit the share button, I would recommend that. This would be a good topic for Christians especially to really unpack and understand. Uh, Brandon Showalter is a reporter for the Christian Post, has covered this extensively, and I am uh, excited to have him back on Life Today Live. Brandon, good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. So here's, I mean, I think we've all seen this in the news, you know, if you, you hear about it, you see things. I have been, um, I have had people say to me, well, come on, that's just going on out in weird parts of California or, you know, some random liberal university. How prevalent is this ideology? It's everywhere. It's everywhere where there's Wi-Fi, Randy. (laughs) Uh, I'm, I've been really alarmed, just the uptick. People I know, I've lost count how many parents I've have reached out to me over the years, uh, red states, Texas, Alabama, (laughs) places where you wouldn't think it might exist. This is devouring so many children. Families are being shattered. Uh, The illusion, people think it is so weird and obscure because maybe they live in a bubble of sorts in their community. They may, in their immediate circle of friends, they may not hear so much about it, but I guarantee you that that's changing because everyone who calls me all of them say, I never thought anything like this could happen to me. Mm, It just wallops them. And yes, it is more concentrated in, you know, more liberal areas of California and places like that. But this is really everywhere. It's in your children's schools. It's on their phones if they have phones, social media. This has gone viral. It's kind of an ideological pandemic, but the repercussions are pretty dire, particularly given how the medical industrial complex is promoting itself, marketing drugs and hormones. There's surgeons on TikTok marketing mastectomies to young vulnerable girls. This is everywhere. This is targeting your kids. It's very prevalent. How, how is it manifesting? Because I know you've covered this. You, 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 you know, people call you, but and you write stories. So, I mean, you're, you're on the front lines of this. How does it manifest itself um, in ways that we may not fully understand? Huh. It's even in children's programming. It's on to, just to give you one example of that. I mean, I mentioned social media and in schools where sex ed is just groomlandia. It's it's really where this gender dogma is furthered with impunity. It just it's it's so present there. But the way it's slipped into even, you know, cartoons for young children, even Blue's Clues, the target age demographic for that show is three to five. And not so long ago, within the last year, they had a pride parade where they had a baby beaver wearing a pink and blue transgender armband. And the beaver, and by the way, beaver is slang. It's urban slang for female genitalia. That that baby beaver had mastectomy scars. So they're trying to mainstream transgender surgery for three to five-year-olds in Blue's Clues. That's how deep this goes. And so you see, even when you go into a doctor's office today, 
They give you more than two gender options. It, how we fill out papers. I mean, this stuff is everywhere down to the deepest level where people are trying to override our basic sense of reality by putting it out there that somehow it's possible to be something other than the biological sex that you are. We have seen some pushback, thankfully. I know Matt Walsh has been at the forefront of it. Um, are, what do we what do we do about the the sort of the medical angle where, in my opinion, it's it's nothing more than mutilation of people, no matter the age, frankly. But especially when yeah. you get into some of the younger areas, I mean, it's this is getting it's it's getting younger yeah. and younger. It's not just the the propaganda like a Blues Clues propaganda, but it's physical mutilation of children is it not yeah some people like to shy away from that word but and i don't like saying it because it is just so stomach turning but just last night on laura ingram she was featuring a, a young girl who had her breasts amputated at age 13. 13 13 year old girl had her breasts cut off that's maiming it's irreversible harm mutilation whatever you want to call it I mean, I think it's going to we're We're watching now as a rash of states pass various laws, um, South Dakota, Utah, uh, you know, Arkansas, Alabama. Uh, there are other other states as well that are, are trying to I mean, Mississippi is I mean, there's there's I think Kentucky just there's the, there's the states are rising up to say, no, can't do this to minors. But those laws are being adjudicated and will continue to be fought in the courts. Florida has done the medical board review and it looks like they might be passing some legislation in the future and they'll have air cover because their medical board um, reviewed the evidence and said it was perilously thin that you don't treat gender confusion with hormones and surgery and that kind of thing. I don't know how it's all going to shake out legislatively, but I think what's encouraging is that as state legislatures tackle the issue, we're forced to have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. And the polling indicates that the vast majority of the public, regardless of their politics, does not support doing this to minors. I think it's been so outrageous that there's been this kind of analysis paralysis that has set in over most people that they can't believe that this is happening to children because mm -hmm. it just seems so outlandish. But no, it really is. And so I don't know what the best sort of legal or legislative fix is. Um, but I think the first step is sort of this awareness that is finally uh, rising. Uh, and so I I, here's hoping that some meaningful reforms will happen. Um, one thing I think will happen is there will be lawsuits against doctors who did this to young people who can't possibly have had the cognitive development to give consent to this kind of thing. And if it becomes too financially cost prohibitive for hospitals and insurers and pharmaceutical companies and doctors to do this kind of thing, if they're gonna be hit in the pocketbook, that's probably what will deter it. Um, but I don't know. It's it's we're kind of in the middle of it right now, and yeah. it remains to be seen what will happen. Is is there a lot of money involved? Oh, it's huge, huge. I mean, think about it this way. I've it, I always say this because it just sounds. I can't. There's not a single time where <laughs> you sound like a conspiracy theorist, tinfoil hat. It all sounds so crazy until you actually look at the numbers and you dig around and you find out that. You know, if you put a child on puberty blockers, we're talking thousands of thousands of dollars over the course of several years. These subcutaneous implant to, you know, put Lupron in your arm to delay your puberty for gender dysphoria, which, by the way, has never been FDA approved. Um, and just so you know, but if you get a whole swath of children on those drugs, you're going to be making millions of dollars for for pharmaceutical companies and for the medical industrial complex. Then you add on cross sex hormones and these body altering surgeries, which need a lot of follow up care. That's more money. Any good journalist should follow the money. This is one of the worst medical scandals of all time, because unlike previous ones, say like thalidomide or lobotomies <laughs> or all these other things that was not marketed to our youth as this kind of really cool identity. Yeah. What's so insidious about this is that these experimental drugs and surgeries are being you know, pummeled into the minds of impressionable youth, many of whom are on the autism spectrum and are dealing with a whole range of mental health conditions. Yeah. They are told that all things gender will solve all their problems and the medical harm of their bodies is horrific. Um, and so there's this ideology that's been operating concurrent with all of these medical, you know, facilities and companies profiting off of this exploitation. And yeah, abuse. I, you know, I, you're you're younger than I am, so you don't you probably don't remember back in the '80s when uh, it was just you know two men that wanted to live together wanted to be left alone, uh, mm -hmm. and you know most people 
in the United States anyway, in Canada, you know, kind of take a hey, live and let live approach mm-hmm. to things. Like, you know, I don't agree with that, but you're an adult, you know, do what you want and just keep it in the bedroom. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I don't care. But there were these people who were the conspiracy theorists of the time saying, oh, this is a slippery slope. We're going to get into yeah. all these things. And most yeah. of us wrote them off as alarmist and crazy. And then I mm-hmm. go, here we are. I mean, it's only a conspiracy theory until you're proven right. And a lot of those have been proven right recently. Right. How, how, do, how do we get to this place? I I hear that all the time, Randy. Um, <laughs> the slippery sloperism. I mean, everybody keeps saying, well, this is going to lead to this and this. And you're accused of fear mongering. And that's just no, that's never you're just not going to happen. And then it happens. And it's like, is there ever any reckoning? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, the slippery slope, I, I say this every once in a while, it's not a slope, it's like a almost vertical thick sheet of ice that's been slathered in grease. It's, it we're, we're going <laughs> very quickly down this this pathway. And I don't think, you know, frankly, I thought that the next step was going to be polygamy or polyamory. And that's happened in a few locales that are very liberal. Or, But, you know, I, I certainly didn't see the transing of children happening so quickly. Uh, but that's been that's been so alarming. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that have happened when you things can happen really quickly when you capture the institutions, when the medical infrastructure in this country becomes inculcated with a fashionable dogma. Um, a lot can happen when you have a grip on influential realms of culture and doctors have a lot of social trust in our society. People trust what people in the white coats say. Um, and so then when they establish standards of care, courts defer to doctor's expertise because if they don't have medical you know, knowledge, they'll, they'll just do that. And so you can do a lot of harm. The academic medicine types who you know, are on the leadership of the American Academy of Pediatrics or the Endocrine Society, when you capture those institutions and those entities, you have a disproportionate influence over society, even if the grassroots and the majority of the population disagree with it. If you seize hold of those those institutions, you can further a lot. So of do you think I mean, that, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, argument uh, or viewpoint? Um, because I think a lot of people may think that oh, I don't know. You know, it's Hollywood driving this, or it's it's the the they media, are some. And, yeah. and, and they're on board, right? You know, but it's it's somebody saying this is the woman of the year, and it's actually a man, or that it's even yeah. politics. So you've got you know, it's the Biden administration loves transgenderism and they've mm-hmm. made no secret about it they paraded it uh or maybe you think it's it's from those guys in those ivory towers you know the academic types that theorize things but it's yeah. seldom you know reality do you really think it's the medical establishment driving it well i think the medical establishment is uh, perhaps the largest contributor i think academics queer theorists hollywood mm-hmm. they're in on it too for sure the media it's that's the it's many tentacles to this behemoth yeah, for yeah. sure but i focus mostly on the medical institutions because those are the people actually doing this stuff these are the ones who are pumping children full of cross sex hormones and puberty blockers and disfiguring their bodies like these are the ones actually committing the acts and so they they are the ones making the profit off of this they are the ones doing this and giving this the sort of veneer of respectability. The media is, I think, probably most culpable because they've been sort of a protective phalanx around these institutions. Mm -hmm. And they've assisted that this is gender affirming care. They're in their reporting. They've, you know, just peppered with gender euphemisms, which we refuse to do at the Christian Post. And (laughs) I think most insidiously, um, this has been the greatest tool that the they have used in addition to the money and the medical system being completely in on this scandal is that the ideology that has captured them it's a feature not a bug is the twisting of language we have an entire chapter in exposing the gender lie about how this dogma perhaps like you know other you know ideologues have twisted language to suit their purposes but this is most nefarious here because if you can make the public believe that a man can be a woman and twist language to that end you can make the public believe anything yeah yeah (laughs) and so that's that's what they have done and when you overtake our very means of communication and you destabilize language to that degree 
you can really destabilize a lot of thought and insanity reigns. Yeah. Yeah. And when the president tells you that standing between a child and the doctor that wants to do these surgeries or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, give them these hormones, you're told it's, it's a sin. <laughs> you go, wow. Okay. Everything's inverted. Yeah. It, it's completely upside down. All right. This is the book exposing the gender lie, Jeff Myers and Brandon show Walter. Uh, last question for you, Brandon, um, uh, because you've been, you know, talking to people, writing stories on this, what, I think the average Christian viewer, um, average, just normal thinking person wants to know what, what, what can I do about it? Have you seen anyone who has been caught up in this that was able to, uh, sort of reverse what's going on? Have they, you know, had some success to, uh, to fight, to push back against this? Cause I think a lot of people just feel completely powerless to do anything about it. Have you seen any you know, good examples of maybe what we can do? Yes, there are a couple things I think you can do. And I think particularly if you have a child who's mired in this and it just erupts your life and destroys your world and just upends everything you knew. Um, one of the things that, and I know, I do know some success stories where their children have desisted and gotten out of this mind frame of mind is that you sever all the influences in their life and, you know, get them off, tech for one just because that's social media is poison for them and you have to tell them the truth about their bodies you know and just never back down or capitulate to any of the ideology and um, and just really get you know (laughs) i know a mom who followed cult deprogramming tactics and actually that actually helped her daughter desist i know about Uh that but i think more broadly uh, i think what parents really need to do especially if they are just bewildered by this ideology and they're just trying to wrap their minds around it they need to familiarize themselves with those who have suffered because I think this stays in the realm of the theoretical until they see how it has impacted families. Mm. And on that note, I'll just point them to a documentary that I was recently a part of called Dead Name. Vimeo censored it on January 23rd, but it was rehomed on deadnamedocumentary.com and it profiles three families that have been ripped apart by this movement. Parents who love their children more than their own lives and trying to keep them safe. But this ideology, when it invaded their homes, it just the rupture that it caused is just pretty staggering. It's not it's not a fun watch for sure, but people need to familiarize themselves with the pain and the suffering of these families if they want to really taste and see what this is really like and have an understanding of it at that kind of level. So I would urge everyone to go watch that film if they want to do something. Uh, support support filmmakers and journalists who are trying to tell the truth. That's a huge thing they can do. Yeah, and one of those is the Christian Post. Uh, looks just like this. You can go visit the Christian Post, and that's where you can get the book. And then deadnamedocumentary.com. Um, Brandon, alarming, uh, interesting. Um, keep reporting on this, please. I uh, appreciate the work that, that you do at the Christian Post and the appearances you make. I've heard you on some radio programs and things. Please, please stay on this. It's hurting people, as you know, and we we have to we have to stop this. It's it's insidious. Uh, so appreciate what you do. Thank you. The Christian Post will never back down. Ah, <laughs> love it. ChristianPost.com. All right. The other author uh, on the book it is exposing the gender lie. Uh, and Jeff Myers is the, the president of Summit Ministries, uh, and he is the other author on this book, along with Brandon. And he joins us now. Jeff, great to have you on Life Today Live. Man, it's great to be back with you, Randy. So Tough we, topic, but there's a lot of hope. Yeah, oh, well, see, and that's what I want to get to, because, you know, it's one thing to curse the darkness. It's another thing to shine the light. Um, so what do we what do? We do? Well, we know how bad it is, and most Christians agree, yeah, I mean, this is... This is not good. This is a bad ideology. Uh, what, what do we do about it? Well, I think the first thing is just being aware that we're in a culture that is suffering, according to experts, an 11-year mental illness epidemic. That We've got a lot of young adults who, coming out of COVID, have high levels of anxiety, depression, even suicidal ideation and that gender ideology struggles fit in with all of that. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if we were to, as a culture, try to decide, should we just start giving kids medicine for something or should we address the root causes? I think we would all agree we should address the root causes. And if the root causes are childhood trauma and in, in all of the cases that, that I've personally worked with, there is some kind of 
unresolved childhood trauma that causes a person to be gender insecure. Mm -hmm. If we dealt with that, then we can see tremendous levels of healing. I think that's one of the greatest pieces of good news in this, that if you can deal with those underlying issues, childhood trauma, uh, unmet core needs, then 70, somewhere between 65, 70% and 88% of cases of gender dysphoria are resolved by the time a child finishes finishes puberty. Mm. So get work, you know, this is one of those times where working with Christian counselors who have a biblical base and understand God's design for male and female is critically important. Now, at, at Summit Ministries, as you're working with a lot of young people, um, I, I'm I'm betting they don't come in with the attitude of, hey, there's a mental illness out there. How do we address it? I mean, it seems like they're being told, they're being indoctrinated in, into, no, this is real and we have to respect it. How do you counter that i mean because it's you're coming from two different places at that point yes well one of our questions that that we'll ask and again we are not asking the mentors who work with students on our program to be therapists mm. we have a high level therapist who works with us and guides our efforts but we ask them to ask questions like what happened to you that caused you to see yourself the way you do mm because you have simultaneously the highest levels recorded of people saying, I love me. And then all of the evidence from their lives saying, I hate me. Hmm. That it, if you think about the, the lie of transgender, it, it's not just saying that there's something wrong with your body. It's saying that your body itself as a unit is wrong. Hmm. That your maleness and femaleness are actually a disease. Now, this is the only only kind of medical or psychological issue that we treat this way. If someone were uh, coming in with anorexia, we would not say, yeah, you feel like you're overweight. Uh, maybe you could stand to lose a few pounds or maybe we should send you in for liposuction. It would simply be, it would be horribly cruel to do that. Instead, we would ask, what are the, what are the underlying issues that are causing you to feel the way you do? What happened to you? And let's try to address that first. So that's, that's the first step. There are a lot of other steps, but that's where I begin. Is, is that working? I mean, are, are kids getting it? I mean, cause I think a lot of you know, people in my, in the Gen X and of course the baby boomers, they're looking at the generations coming up and, and there's some despair, I think, uh, a, a lack of hope, which is, I think is unhealthy. Is this, is this message resonating with, uh, younger people? Yes, it is. Uh, one, one thing that we found to be very helpful, I was just working with a group of students yesterday and most of their questions are about this seems like th this has almost become an obsession. And, and by the way, Randy, just parenthetically, that's actually a problem as well. When you start to psychologize all of your problems and you see yourself as sort of a bundle of neuroses, that's actually the problem. Mm. Uh, so, so we have to do all of the things that we used to do, move kids back to a play-based childhood instead of a screen-based childhood, limit the use of social media, take social media fasts in our family, maybe one, two, three days a week where we all just set aside social media so we can kind of rebalance, develop healthy habits of sleep and uh, uh, good nutrition and exercise. All of those kinds of things actually make a difference. Mm. But helping young people see their value as an image bearer of God rather than their value as, oh, I, you know, I've been diagnosed with five different things. Don't you feel sorry for me? Mm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an intersectionalist psychological basket case, and that's where I get my value. We want people to see the transforming power of Christ in their lives. What do you tell, what do you tell parents who don't know how to approach this at all and, and, you know, the tendency of any parent who has something in a child that they disagree with is to, you know, kind of come at it hard or, uh, you know, almost want to punish it in a sense. Um, what yeah, yeah. It, it, the, there is sort of that thought that if you can punish this and you can make it go away. Right, right. Uh, but the, w what's happening is in the minds of young adults 
And you don't make that go away just by um, altering physical circumstances, banning the the use of a cell phone or or what or whatever. Uh, the first thing is opening up the communication. You know, tell me what's happening. Uh, don't freak out. Mm. Oh, that's whoa, that's interesting. How, you know, how are your friends seeing this? Where did you get the information that is leading you to think the way you do? Um, how how do we you know, how do we help young people see that the cultural stereotypes about masculinity and femininity actually get enshrined by transgender ideology rather than dealt with? So all that's just conversation. Uh, let me give you a vision for your life. I imagine that you, I, I see you as the kind of person who can work through this and become resilient. And yes, you're going to experience resistance. Yes, you might even have uh, classmates who say cruel things like, "You're born, you, well, you're a girl who doesn't enjoy girly things, so you must be born in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. But you were designed by God on purpose. He made you in his image. You are valuable. Your body is not wrong. You were made the way God wanted you to be. And we all struggle with identity issues growing up. Uh, but just because we live in a culture that says all identity issues are ultimately gender identity issues does not mean that is true. Yeah, I mean, that that's the weird thing to me. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, we had tomboys when I was a kid. We had guys that were a little effeminate, but you don't just automatically assume that they're the in the wrong body. It's weird. I want to show people your website. This is summit.org. Uh, and you can see uh, that it has it's student conferences. Uh, uh, tell people what what you do, Jeff, so that they know that there's a resource out there. And, and I will tell them what you do, and then I'll follow up with a question. <laughs> well, there, there are tremendous opportunities here through the Summit Ministries program. Our, uh, our core program that we offer during the summer times is a two-week course of study where young adults 16 to 22 years of age come to either Colorado, to Manatee Springs, Colorado, or Lookout Mountain, Georgia. Uh, we bring in the top Christian thought leaders in everything from theology to psychology to economics to apologetics to help students find compelling answers to their difficult questions. We bring in experts who love Jesus, but who are more well-versed in the issues and more knowledgeable than the students' college professors will be. So they can develop a sense of confidence that they don't have to abandon their faith when they go to college. These programs are available, uh, uh, have been available for 60 years now, every single summer. Mm -hmm. And the results are tremendous. You know, 1% of young adults in America have a biblical worldview, which is hard to believe, but that's where we are. By the time they finish at Summit Ministries, 85% have a biblical worldview. And that, that persists through time. We study our graduates one year, five years, 10 years out, and that change persists in their lives. So it's not just that they come to camp to feel differently about God. They come to camp and learn to see everything else in the world differently because of their relationship with God. And uh, they find tremendous healing, in not only spiritually and in all of the issues they're dealing with, the anxiety, the depression, suicidal ideation, pornography, but also uh, to recognize the influence of the counterfeit worldviews that have caused them to wrongly see the world mm -hmm. and wrongly see themselves. So that's the, if, if I could do anything for a 16 to 22 year old, I would get them in one of those programs this summer. So uh, forgive me if this is a tactless way of putting it, um, but is this a program that is just a bunch of good, you know, a bunch of Christian students who want to further their education and become more secure in their faith? Or do you get a lot of parents pushing the kids that they view having problems as this is the place where they're going to they're gonna fix it? Does that make sense? Well, there's some issues that we're we're not equipped to fix. If if a if a child is struggling with addiction, for example, there are better ways yeah. than coming to Summit to help them. And ha having some some help for addiction first is is going to be really important. Okay. But I would say of the young adults who come, probably half of them are there because they really want to be the sort of leaders who whose story of their lives is one of of influencing people for the positive, being a blessing, bringing flourishing to the nations of the earth, becoming the very best uh, leaders in law and in politics and in the military and in business and all these different areas. 
But probably half of them are there because somebody said, uh, you need to do this. <laughs> okay. You need to go to this program. <laughs> I can't explain to you exactly why, but you will thank me later. Yeah. Okay. And and, and that's fair. I, I, I finished out, I went to public school most of my life, I finished out at a private school, went to Oral Roberts University. And so I know you kind of, sometimes you get that. And you get a lot of kids that are genuinely seeking, trying to figure things out that don't know where they stand. And I think that's a great yes. foundation. All right. So the, the book is The Gender Lie. Uh, is available exposing the gender lie rather it is it still an ebook or have you guys printed some up we do have them printed up but okay. it's available for free we wanted to offer this book for free to people at summit.org slash protect christian post is also offering it because my co-author brandon showalter mm -hmm. who you've interviewed is uh, as an investigative reporter for them yeah oh uh, that's great i mean the, the fact that you're doing it just to inform people i think is is wonderful so if you you're interested uh, download that for free you can go to summit.org uh and find it there and with well, the christian post and find a little easier probably to find at summit.org in the christian post because they have a lot going on over the christian post but jeff is there anything yeah. else we didn't cover that you want to let us know because i think this is an important topic and i really want parents especially but also young people to be able to be equipped to discuss this with people who don't know where they stand or who are you know 100 percent in the tank with this with this ideology we have to be able to knock down every idea that you know stands between man and god and this is kind of the big one right now yes it is it, this is a big one uh, this is this is what i say if i just get one one shot at it well, we are not talking about criticizing people who are gender insecure. We recognize that young adults especially have a great deal of insecurity about a great many things and identity struggles are part of that. It's just part of growing up. Uh, but this is about an industry and an ideology that try to take the fact that there are gender insecure people and use that to manipulate those individuals to gain a great deal of political power and make mm -hmm. a great deal of money. If we recognize that, it sort of sort of um, removes the spell and allows us to move back toward communication. And then uh, in cases where this is very severe, good, solid Christian therapy from individuals who want to resolve those core childhood issues and see young people emerge as healthy. Dr. Myers, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the efforts that you're going through. Uh, we, uh, you give me hope. <laughs> and so thank you for that, most of all. Yeah, I, I'm glad, Randy. I, I think there is a room for hope. So, you, a lot of social trends rise and fall. This one seems to have gotten more traction than most because there are people who realize they can make billions of dollars off of medicalizing it. Hmm. Uh, but hopefully we'll see some sanity emerge yep. because the truth is true. Yeah. Well, if you want some sanity, check out summit.org, Christian Post, and the book Exposing the Gender Lie. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, hit share. This is one that will help equip people. So share is a good button to hit. If you haven't liked, subscribed, or followed, do that now. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. But enjoy it. Squeeze all the fun you can out of it. Because it's soon going to end. And truth will be on the throne for a day. Sunday is coming.